you see, that first year, of course, it was you know, almost a little grim. <laughs> but um, then um, two years later, we decided to, to launch into the marching band competition. And the first year, we just went in for criticism only. And um, the second year, we went in for to be judged, and we came in with a second division rating. And then the following year, and for four years in a row leading up to the year I left, we had Division I ratings each year. And that was not only in marching band, but also in the concert band. And uh, we had a great situation. We had no football. We didn't have to put on a football show every weekend. We could spend time learning music. And consequently, the music that we put into our marching shows was, I think, a much better caliber than what some bands could do because we had time to learn the music. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a, just a beautiful time in terms of putting that all together. Yeah. I think the word lab perhaps conjures up a, a, that we have a bunch of rats so we right. go in and run it through treadmills <laughs> and so on. The lab idea was that uh, you had a place where you could send, Teachers College had a place where they could send their student teachers. Mm -hmm. And in many cases they processed almost all of them through the laboratory school. Um, the, the reason that University High eventually uh, shut down was that uh, the East High School was opened and uh, the, uh, the university didn't want the expense. They wanted to save some money and they couldn't handle all the student teachers because Teachers College was growing and so consequently we had to, they had to use the public schools as a place for, for their student teaching. I can't say that we did a lot of experimental things with kids. Uh, but it was a place for young people to get uh, their student teaching out of the way. And, and then they also had uh, youngsters that were sophomores and juniors in, in Teachers College that also came over and worked in, uh, in the building as well. Uh, I think that, that for the most part the kids really thought that this was a kind of a special place to become uh, be a part of. And uh, it was. It was special. Barsler, we had Mary Barsler in a modern problems class. She had to be 19 years old because she As was young teacher. coming into college. Uh -huh. She was 19 years old. Now think of some of the people because we were that was modern problems with a mixed class. It wasn't all freshmen. Some freshmen, some sophomores. But we, you know, we weren't. We thought we weren't very far apart from her, and we probably weren't. Well, and what did that what did that do to the class room dynamic? Well, she was very good looking, so she could just twist us around her finger like little little kids, you know. <laughs> but she was, uh, there were many, many good teachers. Well, I was, I, I had done a study early on when I was in Grand Island and found some pretty good evidence that uh, the appearance of a kid was, was correlated fairly highly with uh, performance. So in those days we used to, well, a ducktail haircut was kind of a common thing and we didn't let ducktail haircuts and, and and kids had to have belts on. Uh, we we couldn't do that today, <laughs> quite frankly. Well, once again, it was just a little scary. I didn't know where I was supposed to go, what was going to be the schedule of the day. Um, you, you know, are you going to be changing classrooms or not? I we just didn't have a sense of of what that was going to be. But to be in a new building was pretty exciting. It was all bright and shiny and. Um, I was just talking to one of the other alumni that said one of the saddest days in my life was when I was working on my master's degree and went back and the lockers were gone. Oh, I mean, how could they do that to my school? So, you know, all yeah. of those changes to have to go into a production room, which was the gym, you know. Excuse me, we should be doing basketball and PE class in here. But, uh, no, that, so it, it was a wonderful, I mean, the way it was laid out, the cafeteria on the bottom floor, plenty of room, and we had the courtyard so that it always was bright and cheery. And um, then we had the activity area, which, thank heavens, they've still kind of saved that, even since they turned it into Henslick, mm -hmm. where we could congregate um, when we were done with lunch, and we had dances up there um, during the noontime. And, and um, oh, yeah, I can still re picture when the stroll was um, really in, where everybody would line up and we would do the stroll. And 
Uh, we did the jitterbug. <laughs> so it was, um, I think that was another thing that was very unique, is the upperclassmen and the lower classmen mixed quite easily. Um, I have very mm -hmm. fond memories of some of the upperclassmen who don't even remember me, but just because they were so kind to us when we were, you know, lowly seventh and eighth graders. And there were no girls athletics. I look back now and regret that. Um, where was Title IX when I needed them? But one thing about English I remember is we had to learn how to diagram sentences. Um, and, you know, that was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> the papers from the observers, you know, to see what they have to say. Because <clears throat> my teaching was different than in an uh, English classroom or something. And, and I remember the teachers in these other classes, they said, well, you, it's easier for you because you can, they can use their hands. And uh, so you don't have the problems, the discipline problems and so forth that they have because I keep them busy. Well, you can have just as many problems, but um, we tried very, very hard to have uh, unusual programs and so forth. Well, I started the boys' classes in home economics.